Alleluia. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at His hands, to set forth His most worthy praise, to hear His holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship Him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen.
The almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for the third Sunday of Easter is Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. A reading from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you. 
that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next day, after the man, lame from birth, had been healed, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners, Peter and John, stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, 
let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the dead, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, 
and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the ecumenical seminary that I attended, Wednesday night was the Community Eucharist. The Episcopal part of the Divinity School opened its doors on these Wednesday evenings to the larger seminary community for that service of Holy Communion, and it was quite well attended both by seminarians and their families. I'll never forget a sermon our seminary dean delivered in the chapel at one of those Eucharists. It was on today's Gospel, the last sentence. His text was, You are witnesses of these things. I wonder if I was the only one there that evening with a certain sense of a jolt to my system. Here I was in seminary, surrounded by so many others sent by their various denominations, studying together church history, theology, and scripture, pastoral theology, parish ministry, and Christian education, talking at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, in the corridors and on the grounds, about ministry and commissions on ministry, our field placements in local churches, and of course our hope for call to a parish, and yet still a jolt to my system. You are witnesses of these things. Our dean was a good one and good for a reason. He had a way of reminding us why we were there. You are witnesses of these things. He knew that so much of seminary life tended to get caught up in the sideshows of the church's life, sometimes with underlying substance, but often with an unhealthy focus or energy behind it. Likewise, also a preoccupation with ourselves, our vocations, our own spiritual growth, our so-called spiritual formation, but sometimes with a worrisome emphasis on self. And to all of this he had a duty to remind us, you are witnesses of these things. What are these things? There is really a remarkable summing up of that for us all in the scripture we have heard today. First, something very simple but very important that we are Easter Christians. It is true in a way that we can sometimes take for granted that Easter is the beginning of all Christian focus. All are getting clear. It was certainly true for these disciples. They were, after Jesus' crucifixion, as we find them today, stunned, in mourning, paralyzed. More than trying, as we say, to pick up the pieces, they were left without a clear sense of what the pieces meant, how they might, if at all, fit together or make sense anymore. What to do with Jesus' life and disastrous death, their discipleship, and now their lost Lord. They have one another. There is the sense of that. But have you ever seen a dog lost by the side of a road, ownerless, looking over their shoulder, making the best of it, but the sense that something is profoundly wrong and cannot work? We sense an inner quality in each of these disciples somewhat like that, don't we? 
Jesus' resurrection is the coming back together of it all for the disciples and their new point of departure. A joy which puts the pieces together. A power to go forward because truly they have been found again. Jesus gives them not only hope again, but life. A capacity to go ahead again exactly as they were and yet profoundly changed. On their own now, but not alone. Just moments before, like a dog lost in the gully at the side of the road. Now confident and cared for, sure of home, and able to venture forward in confidence. The disciples are given the gift of being disciples again. They know what their life will mean now. And most of all, they have life. So, as they go off from there, it is more than just a content, a specific message to be conveyed. There is that. But there is also a deep and underlying energy. With their Lord, they are alive again. We hear that with such joy and power from John's epistle today. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we saw it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing this, that our joy may be complete. And with that joy, that energy, that life with a capital L, is the Easter motive with which they proceed for our sake. We heard it with great power last Sunday when John ended his gospel saying to us, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing, you may have life in his name. You are witnesses of these things. What happened to the disciples that day and throughout the 50 days of Easter is that Jesus told them what it was all about together. He opened their minds to understand the scripture, that all that had been written about him in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, Jesus says. And that is what they did. And in every miracle and good deed they performed, they pointed only to him, calling us and all they met into fellowship with him, that we too might have life in his name not just as by the content of a message, sure and certain, but in the resurrection sense in which they knew it. From lost to found, from sorrowful to hope-filled, saved, alive, all the pieces together, a vision that is both heaven and earth. This meeting of heaven and earth is found in the risen Jesus himself. Handle me, Jesus says to the disciples today. And yet, for the disciples, as for us, a need for faith also. They saw him, but could not see the church to come. We see the church, the fruit of their witness, but not yet the risen head. Yet each bears sure witness to the other. The life found exactly the same. Our witness is this life found, experienced, known as members of his body, the church, in the breaking of bread, 
in the hearing of the word, in prayer and in sacrament, in the work of the Holy Spirit in the church, in lives of faith, in love for one another, in keeping his commandments, and surely in his ever-present care for us. And like the apostles, our joy is made complete when we are witnesses of these things. You know, it's quite a distance now from my seminary days, but the witness has never changed. But of course, this is not about seminary. It's about our baptism. It is about what we all share. The life given in him in that holy font, running over like the cup of the 23rd Psalm to a thirsty world, a thirst that we too share, but know where to find the drink. Thanks be to God. As I pondered afresh this call to be witnesses of these things, two verses from our hymnal spoke to me. One is an Easter hymn, the other technically isn't, but could well be one. One speaks to the church, the other of the individual believer, and both are needed to be witnesses, the witnesses we are called to be. Let me start with the individual, like the dog once at the side of the road. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. And to the church, the last verse of that great Easter communion hymn, at the Lamb's high feast we sing. Easter triumph, Easter joy, these alone do sin destroy. From sin's power do thou set free souls newborn, O Lord, in thee. Hymns of glory, songs of praise, Father, unto thee we raise. Risen Lord, all praise to thee, with the Spirit ever be. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. 
Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth, that thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O God, whose blessed Son didst manifest himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open, we pray thee, the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We thank thee, Heavenly Father, for that thou hast delivered us from the dominion of sin and death, and hast brought us into the kingdom of thy Son. And we pray thee that, as by his death he hath recalled us to life, so by his love he may raise us to joys eternal, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing for our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who has made up one blood all the peoples of the earth, and did send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, Grant the people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold. Pour out thy spirit upon all flesh. And hasten the coming of thy kingdom. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're invited to offer our own prayers and intercessions. Let us remember all those in our parish family who are ill for many cause. Remember in our prayers all those preparing for baptism in this holy season. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we entrust all who are dear to us to thy never failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that thou art doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be infinitely thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>